we don't yet have all the answers, but we do know that multiple people have been wounded, some gravely, in explosions at the Boston Marathon. President Obama was very careful not to call the Boston bombs terrorism, but the White House is treating it as an act of terror. So why is it so hard to say straight away what is and isn't terrorism? First of all, there's no globally accepted definition of the term, but the CIA's definition of terror is a premeditated, politically motivated act of violence perpetrated against non-combatant targets by subnational groups or clandestine agents. So far, it's not clear what the motives of the attack in Boston were. It clearly terrorized, but it may not have been terrorism. Since September the 11th, 2001, the word terror has been increasingly prevalent, but the first references to terrorism as a systematic use of terror as a policy goes back to the 1790s. It's only in the last couple of decades that usage of the word has spiked. There's also the old saying that one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. So in Syria, depending on which side you lie on, the rebels are either brigades heroically fighting for democracy or they're the opposition, simply a collection of terrorist cells. The Global Terrorism Database has recorded more than 104,000 cases of terrorism between 1970 and 2011. And in places like Iraq, it's a near constant threat. In fact, on the same day as the attacks on Boston, a series of car bombs went off, killing 31 people and wounding more than 200. But in the US, it's actually very rare. In June 2012, the US National Counterterrorism Center released its 2011 report on terrorism. It revealed that terrorism killed 17 US private citizens around the world in that year. In the US, you're more than 500 times more likely to be killed in a shooting. Since 9-11, there have been 19 known bomb plots foiled in the United States, and the Boston bombs were the first successful ones since that atrocity. But what about a more general definition? What about terrorism being something that just instills terror, that makes you scared? Then it would be terrorism every time there was a school massacre or an office worker going postal. So whilst it's relatively easy to agree that individual atrocities inspire terror, the political dimension to each one is more difficult. Terrorism implies politics and therefore there will always be a value judgment. It's often misunderstood to be something that can only be carried out by foreign people or even just Muslims. And it's for this reason that news organisations often try to not use the term, instead opting for words such as bombers, militants and insurgents in an aim to be more objective. Click subscribe, check out some of the other videos we've done and we'll see you again next time.